my name's Sean Wright. I'm reporting on behalf of Ringwalk UK Media. Um, and I'm here welcoming Callum Thompson, a uh, professional super featherweight. Welcome, Callum. How are you? Not bad, mate. Yourself? Yeah, I'm all good. Thank you, mate. Thanks for asking. Uh, first of all, welcome. As I say, great to see you. Um, you've got your professional debut coming up this weekend on Friday in Manchester. Um, have you got an opponent named yet for that? I think so, mate, yeah. I think there's there's one pencil in, I'm not too sure, yeah. I have a name. Um, I had a look on who it is and stuff, yeah. So I'm sure I'll find out either later or tomorrow. Yeah. Um obviously there's a few names on there on the card from from your stable. Um Alex Dilmagani, Marcus Morrison. How excited are you to get going now? Yeah, I can't wait, mate. It's been a long time coming, so you know, I just can't wait to get in there now. I don't think Alex, I don't think Alex Dilmagani's fighting on it now. Right, um, I think he's off now, but Marcus is Marcus is on it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Good stuff. Um, the exciting times for you, um, as we mentioned. Obviously, you've joined um, Gallagher's gym, signed up with Frank Warren. Um, but the circumstances behind that, um, some people might not be aware, but you could have been part of that Olympic team, that successful Olympic team in Tokyo, couldn't you? Um, but for a rule change, um, can you explain the the what happened now? Yeah, so basically, obviously, the um, the the weights, the Olympic weights, um, they they got changed. The males, uh, they took two out in order to add two female weights in. And um, obviously, one of mine was the weights that got um, taken out, sixty kilo lightweight. So obviously, it, for me, it was just you know it was it was either go up or go down, and yeah, I just felt I was just in a, a little bit in the middle and. You know, it, but but you know now they, they've actually introduced the weight back in, which is even yeah. more frustrating. Yeah, as you said there, I think it was the sixty kilo category, wasn't it? Yeah, and lightweight. Yeah, lightweight, and it's difficult because, like you say, you were either tasked with making weight um, lighter, sort of three kilos lighter each time for the fight, or face moving up where you're in with potentially you know bigger lads. So it, it must have been a really difficult decision for you to to have to make. Yeah, of course it was, mate. I mean, like you say, obviously the weight below was just it was a bit too much, especially when you you know taking circumstances. You've got to make weight every day. It's not just oh you make weight once and then you know you've got to consistently make weight you know on daily. So obviously taking that into account, that just weren't an option for me. And then moving up, it obviously you know you you're fighting bigger lads, lads that are coming down from a lot heavier, whereas I'd be going up. So yeah, you know when when it gets to that level, given them. Um, Given chances away like that, it just, you know, it's pro- probably very dangerous for me. So I just, I thought, I just thought, reeled that out, really. Yeah. I mean, you're in a great position now and, and you're where you want to be. But at the time, that must have been uh, difficult to accept and difficult to move past initially. Yeah, of course. I mean, it was a big, big uh, ambition of mine, you know, to make the Olympic Games. And obviously, with that been taken away, it was, you know, it was a bit of pills to swallow. But like I say, I've just got to sort of put that behind me now and, you know, uh, look forward, look to the future and, you know, uh, focus on, on bigger and better things now. Yeah. And we mentioned there, obviously, um, you're with Joe Gallagher and some of the guys there. He is a, a world-renowned trainer, probably one of the best British trainers in, in history. You know, he's very well decorated. How were you nervous about uh, making that step? Because I think... I'm right in saying that Joe just doesn't take on anyone. They've got to fit the right um, dynamics of the gym, haven't they? So how did that come about? Yeah, so um, I went down sparring Scott Quigg. I got invited down to sparring him. Obviously, I knew, I knew Anthony Collar anyway, so that sorted out, that sort of could come about. And like I say, I went down, sparred Scott. Um, I sort of become like his main sparring partner for, for, you know, for the ongoing weeks then up into the John O'Carroll fight. And then I, I was in a position where I was obviously turning professional myself. Um, sort of had a little chat with Joe about it. Um, he invited me down to, to, to come down and, and just sort of, you know, feel the gym out and see if it fits in and stuff. And I, made, I f- felt like I fit in like a glove, you know, I loved it down there. Obviously, the stable lads that are down there are brilliant. So for me, it was a no-brainer. And, you know, Joe sort of um, helped me with, with open arms early. So, yeah. Yeah. And you mentioned there, sorry, yeah, you mentioned there some of the guys in the gym and, and, and you've got the likes of Callum Johnson, Tassie Jonas, obviously Ant Crawler now helping out in there, you know, after the career that he's had, a former world champion. 
like to Scott Quick? Does it feel like you're learning so much really quickly? Yeah, of course, mate. Listen, I'm just like a sponge in there now. I'm just soaking all the information and, you know, uh, listen to all the lads, you know, listen to Joe, listen to Colla, and then obviously the Spartan that I get to watch. Not only that I get to do the Spartan that I also get to watch, you know, so listen, I'm, I'm in a brilliant place. Good stuff. Um, just just touching back on the Olympics there, how, how much of it did you see and, and was it nice for you? Presumably there were quite a lot of competitors in there that you you know quite well. Um, first of all, was it nice to see, obviously, ex-teammates um, do really well and, and B, what was it, um, did you feel a little bit cheated, the fact that they brought that weight back in? Did you feel a little bit of resentment, the fact that that could have been you? I mean, of the weight only just been brought in for the next Olympics, so... I mean, obviously, it, like I said, it, obviously it is hard, you know, to, to think, oh, well, you know, why have they done it now? You know, uh, why 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 did they do it if they were going to bring it back? But, you know, to, to see the lads do well, the lads and the girls do well, obviously that was that was something, something nice to see. Yeah. Uh, but, yeah, I, they, were obviously, they were on a bit of, bit of mad times. Where the time difference was, was a bit huge. So I wouldn't say I got to watch every single one, but I watched as much as I could. Uh, as much as I could. Yeah. Yeah, obviously it was good to you know to see them you know very successful Olympics. Yeah, and then yeah. sorry, no, I was just saying yeah, it was just really good to see. Yeah, and some of those guys obviously they've already intimated that they're gonna sort of follow in your footsteps and turn professional, likes of Pat McCormack and uh, Fraser Clark. What would you say the, the the biggest difference is? Obviously, you haven't fought professionally yet, but is there a difference in preparation and the way that you set up? Yeah, definitely. I mean, obviously, as an amateur, you fight three threes. You know, starting off, I'm I'm actually starting. I think I'm fight, fighting six rounds in this fight. So obviously, you know, there's a difference in the rounds. And then not only then, you know, you got to think you've got time to take your time a little bit more. Obviously, the you know the, the gloves are smaller. And not only that, the sessions. You know, I, I train now. The sessions are a lot longer and more grueling on your body. So. Yeah, I think taking all into account, you know, there is a big difference, you know, although it's boxing, obviously if the difference between amateur and professional, you know, there is, there is a, a big difference. So, yeah, I think it'll be interesting to see how, how people adapt to it. Because obviously for me, I haven't fought amateur now for, I am fought for two and a half years, so it's been a long time out the ring. Yeah. But yeah, like I say, there, there is a big difference. Yeah. Um. Obviously you're a lad that loves his boxing. As, as a youngster, was that always the case? Did you always have the boxing bug? No, I wouldn't say not really. I didn't get into it for the love. It was just sort of, you know, I started when I was seven. I was actually my mum who sent me down the gym. The gym was quite close to me. Um, and then obviously from from sort of, got, you know, spending time there, I, I fell in love with the sport. And like now, you know, obviously I am a big boxing fan. You know, I, I, do, I do really love the sport. Yeah. Um, I've, I've read somewhere that you're a big fan of Lomachenko. Obviously, he yeah. he transcended the amateur scene and, and the professional scene pretty seamlessly and, and got going pretty quickly. Is that something that you're looking to do? Um, I mean, I wouldn't say as quickly as he's done it. Like, you know, he's, <laughs> he's a very good fighter and, and I don't think many people could do what he's done. But listen, I think, you know, it's uh, the, 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 um, how fast I move and progress in my career, that, that's more up to me, you know, me managing me from all I'm, I'm just a fighter, mate. I get in a fight anyone, anytime. So, uh, yeah, we'll just, just see how, how, uh, how quickly my my uh, career progresses. Yeah. For anyone that's not managed to catch any footage, what, what kind of boxer, what kind of fighter can we expect in the professional ranks? Yeah, I think I'm from, from foot, uh, quite a defensive fighter, you know, uh, I like to get involved. Um, like you like say, I like Lomachenko, so I try, you know, hit, hit, not get it, move, use, use my angles quite a bit, um, good footwork, and yeah. Yeah, good stuff. Um, you're going to be operating at Super Featherweight, I believe. Um, what are your aspirations? Have you set yourself any targets, or are you just going to take, take it as it comes? Yeah, well, listen, obviously, everyone's got the main aspiration of being a world champion, but Listen, there's there's a lot of there's a lot of stepping stones in between then and there. So, I mean, for me, it's just about getting the ball rolling now, getting this first one out the way for and then and then we just sort of go from there. Yeah, um, you're a Liverpool lad. Obviously, the the got a rich history of producing really good fighters. I guess not just in Liverpool, but in the northwest in general. 
are you looking forward to being being able to represent the city again and, and give them some big fights? Yeah, definitely. I mean, like you say, Liverpool's always been quite a big fight in city, so and you know, they always want to back, back their own. So yeah, I mean, I'm looking forward to some big nights in Liverpool. Yeah. Um we've been asking some of our fighters that we've been interviewing, obviously. It's it's not set in stone, but we hope that one day Fury might fight Joshua. Um, we've been asking how how we, how uh, the fighters that we interview and the coaches and stuff. How how do you see that fight panning out if it actually gets made? Um, I genuinely believe it's a fifty fifty fight. I think you know whoever gets the tactics right on the night. I mean, like you see, two completely different styles. And um, yeah, it's a tough one to say. I'm edging towards Fury, but. Like I say, I think it's just whoever gets the tactics right on the night. Yeah, really interesting you say that. Most people we've asked, and I won't give too much away, but most people we've asked, genuine 50-50. But if they had to sort of sit one side of the fence, it tends to be Fury. I wonder if that's just because he's had to show different sides to his game, I guess, in different fights, do you think? Yeah, possibly. Could be. I mean, he's got a hell of a chin and he's got a hell of a heart, so... I just think, you know, having that said, it's hard to beat a fighter like that. Um, but like I say, I just it's just really down to who gets the tactics right on the night, you know. Yeah. Obviously, you got you got Joshua's got the power, um, but now we've seen Fiori is also, you know, got some some power in there. So yeah, it'll be interesting. Most definitely. Um, there's just something else we want to do a bit of a quick fire um question round for you, just for a bit of fun. I'm not trying to get you in trouble, but I'm going to ask you a few questions about the um, the guys in Gallagher's gym and, and uh, hopefully we'll learn a little bit about them. So, for example, I might say who was the most talented boxer in the gym and you can give me your answer. So, are you ready? Go on, yeah, go for it. <laughs> okay, who's got the worst dress sense? I've got to say Anthony <laughs> Clark. <laughs> okay, who is the biggest joker? Jose Burton. Hey, who's the best dancer? Oh, mate, I, I don't know. I couldn't even <laughs> tell you. That. I'm gonna, I'm gonna just guess and say Natasha Jonas. I've never seen none of them dance. <laughs> we expect <laughs> footage now. <laughs> um, who is the most laid back in the gym? Uh, Marcus Morrison. Okay, who has the biggest punch, pound for pound? I want to say Jose Burton again. Okay. Uh, who's the most intelligent? I'm going to say, I'm going to say Ophi again. I, I think you know, <laughs> you're doing well. And and who, who do you think is the fittest in the gym? Paul Butler, without his house. Paul Butler. Definitely Paul Butler. Yeah. Okay. Um, have you got a prediction for us for Friday, um, Callum? How do you see it going? Just a win. Either way, a win, KO points, just to just count Thompson win. Yeah, get a win on the board, eh? That's it, mate, yeah. Well, all that remains is uh, for us to wish you well. Thanks ever so much for giving your time, mate, and uh, we look forward to documenting your career in, in, in more detail, but all the best for the weekend, mate. Thank you very much, mate. Thank you very much. Take care, Callum. Thank you, mate.